not lost on us that this is the very first super tall in Brooklyn. And I think there's a real responsibility that comes with that of sort of resetting the skyline. One of the things that struck me spending a lot of time in downtown Brooklyn is there were a lot of buildings that were being built and a lot of them were, were fine, but none of them really had any identity. And I didn't want to do another blocky monolithic ho-hum building. It's time for super high quality capital A architecture to once again be built in downtown Brooklyn. I was working on both the American Copper Building and 111 West 57th Street with JDS and Michael Stern called and asked me if I would want to take a ride out to downtown Brooklyn because there was a site that he was looking at. And then we'll have steps coming up because the pool deck will be the pool deck will be there. That parapet's not. It's amazing as you turn the corner down Fleet or DeKalb and then suddenly you see the historic bank building and you realize what a prominent and important intersection it is in the entire city of Brooklyn. And we had heard uh, through the proverbial grapevine that J.P. Morgan Chase was going to decommission the Chase branch that was in the old bank building and look to either sell the site or sell the air rights. The building itself, the historic landmark needed work, but clearly you could see it was a gem uh, ready to be brought back to life. We were very intrigued by the possibilities here, but we weren't naive about the challenges of assembling such a complicated site. The site is nearly a full city block. It's triangular. It's very dense. It's kind of woven between a bunch of subway lines. The bank is a series of hexagons. There kind of isn't a straight line anywhere to be found. And to figure out how to do a very large tower with mixed uses, um, with a very complicated foundation system, preserving landmark walls, integrating them into the tower, it was a real challenge. But that's really what excites us about doing these kind of projects. So, you know, it's a puzzle. So this site was zoned to have a very tall building on it. It was really seen as the sort of pinnacle of the downtown Brooklyn skyline. If you deployed all the FAR on the non-landmark sites, you ended up with a very long slab building. And we just saw it as a kind of inelegant solution. If we wanted to make a really beautiful building, a building worthy of being the tallest building in Brooklyn, it needed to come on to the landmark site. The resulting design ends up with a tower that is 1,066 feet tall, uh, making it the tallest building in Brooklyn by almost 300 feet. In order to get the footprint of the tower where we needed it to be, we knew that we would have to remove a portion of the bank at the back. Um, so we proposed to Landmarks the, the notion of preserving that wall and slipping the tower behind it. And we were able to get unanimous community board approval and we got unanimous landmarks approval. Sites where you can build great iconic towers in New York um, are shrinking and disappearing. In Manhattan, you have the primary avenues and the secondary streets. And so it always orients your building in one particular way. In Brooklyn, all the grids are shifted because they were developed at different points in history. The Brooklyn Tower will be viewed from many different angles. And so by using hexagons and interlocking hexagons that have setbacks that go up in a spiral, it created almost a lighthouse effect in the center of the Brooklyn skyline. When you look at the facade in the oblique, you can see how a glass building turns into a solid. And that's remarkable. One of the things we did was align the amenity spaces in the tower with the roof of the historic structure. It's amazing to restore this beautiful dome, but then to feature it as part of the architecture of the amenity package and having the pool wrapping around it and all this open space and plantings up here, it'll really be this kind of incredible oasis that's just sort of floating above the city street. And one of the things that really does excite us about this building is being able to build an iconic super tall that has all the attributes of all the super talls along Billionaire's Row, let's say. Incredible ceiling heights, expansive panoramic views. This building has all of those attributes and arguably even more because it has an even more robust amenity package. It has even more transportation and retail adjacencies. And it's a very large building with a lot of units. It's exciting for us that we could build a building that a large swath of the population will get to live in and enjoy, not just an elite few. Of course, the building is really striking presence on the skyline, and it's very bold and dynamic. But when you walk in and you cross the threshold, it has to feel right inside out. 
and we've worked really hard with our team to make sure that it's coherent inside and out and the grandeur of the building on the outside translates inside. Our condominiums essentially start above the roof lines of almost every other building in Brooklyn at over 500 feet in the air. So what other people consider their penthouse is just where we start. We, we keep going from there. We're very proud that we're the ones who are doing it and we think that we're really doing um, Brooklyn justice by bringing this incredible building. One of my favorite things to do as an architect is one of our buildings is going up, I sort of put my back to the building and I watch people as they approach the building. When you see them smiling and you see them happy and you see them kind of in awe, then I feel like we did a good job.